Joy segment tonight, writing in the Wall Street Journal, University of Pennsylvania law professor Amy Wax opined that African Americans should take more personal responsibility for improving their lives rather than blaming racism. Predictably, Professor Wax has come under some criticism, and she joins us now from Philadelphia. Now, there was much more to your article, but just give us the central theme of it. Well, the article tries to use some very commonplace insights from the law of remedies to shed some light on uh, what the solutions to racial disadvantage might be. And the central insight of the article is that even though the ideal is that the individual who caused the wrong or caused the harm has to right the wrong, that isn't always possible. And people who deal with everyday remedies and liability know that. For example, if I knock out your eye, I can't necessarily put it back. If I kill your child, I can't necessarily bring her back to life. Uh, and I think that that insight does apply to racial disadvantage. There's no question that slavery and discrimination have caused harms, but at this point, the harms that they have caused, which are in part dysfunctional behavioral patterns, can't really be corrected by outsiders. In fact, the twist here is that only the victim can correct their own harms. And I use the analogy of the parable of the paraplegic, someone who's been run over by a truck and the trucker has to pay for his rehabilitation, but unless he works really hard, uh, he will never walk again. Okay. Now, your criticism has come from within the University of Pennsylvania by um, the Black Law Students Association. And their thesis, this guy Nick Vaughn spoke for them, is that where you go wrong, Professor, is that institutional racism still exists. So even if a person wants to lift themselves up um, by their own means and by their own abilities. They can't because America is still a racist place that keeps all African Americans or most down. What say you? Well, I think it's very easy to make a, a sweeping general statement like that. And I'm not denying that discrimination exists because it does exist. But I don't think it follows from that that uh, African Americans can't improve their situation drastically. And the reason for that is that times have changed. Overt discrimination, the kind of Jim Crow type of exclusionary discrimination, is, has really abated. It has faded, and there's evidence for that. There's data that suggests that in sociology and economics. And really what's left is uh, behaviors that are holding African Americans back. So you're not buying. Uh, you're not buying uh, Mr. Vaughn's thesis that um, if you are a responsible African American citizen of any age, you work hard, you're honest, you still can't make it. That's what they're basically saying. You're still going to be put down. You don't buy that. Well, the evidence belies that. I mean, plenty of African Americans are making it, the people who study hard, who get married, uh, who, who work steadily, who obey the law, those African Americans are making it. And I think the Thurnstroms have documented that. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't little bumps along the way, but I but think those are... there are little bumps are... for everybody. Everybody's got little bumps. I think African Americans have a much tougher time of it, and I wrote that in my book, Who's Looking Out for You? But I agree with you that it can be done. Final question for you. Um, if you go, and I think you know this, to poor black neighborhoods, you will find a lot of defeatism in the air still. I can't make it. I can't do this. Whitey does this or whoever it may be, whoever it may be. It doesn't have to be Whitey. It can be the landlord. It can be the cops, anybody. This defeatism, I believe, saps a lot of energy and motivation out of people. You agree? Well, I do. I think in the end, the final frontier is going to be a psychological one, which is to stop seeing yourself as a victim or perhaps to acknowledge that you were victimized, but that really has very little to do with how you're going to get yourself out of it. In fact, one of the lessons of my piece is that the past really tells us very little about the future, as, as counterintuitive as that might be. All right. Well, I, uh, I hope people read it and uh, think about it, because I do believe that, uh, you know, you can do it now. It's tougher, but you can do it if you're African-American. Professor, thanks very much. When we come back, the most controversial story of the evening, does the film Million Dollar Baby by Clint Eastwood glorify euthanasia?